everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101. We are gonna do another fun Christmas tree inspired rock here. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is just quickly lay out a white triangle for my tree on here. Um, just because the way that we're gonna be stacking to make this quilt style rock, I would love to have a white base coat underneath it. So I'm gonna speed that up, um, but I'm just using my acrylic paint. I don't have my white paint pens anymore. I need a new one. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it out quickly, get it a nice coat, let it dry, and then we will get started. If you have white paint pens, you can start with that as well. So I will phase forward to this being done. It literally will be a triangle painted in white. Okay, so once you have your tree shape on your rock, we are gonna go through with our black uh, liner paint pen here. We're gonna outline our tree and then we're gonna divide it into sections. Now this is a bumpier rock, so I'm gonna be pretty careful. I'm gonna go nice and slow and I'm not gonna press very hard. Um, I can go back and fill in any gaps where it doesn't actually leave a mark later. But really, if you hold it slightly to a side and go very gentle, uh, you shouldn't splatter or anything, even on a bumpy rock. If there's a little spot where it doesn't actually lay down paint, you can come back and add it when you're all finished with your design. I'm just gonna go along the bottom here. I'm actually gonna cut across the bottom because I'm gonna do a different pattern in the trunk. All the way like that. Now we're gonna break this into sections. So um, you can kind of do as many as you want. I like to do at least three different patterns or fabrics um, on my tree, which means I want to have at least five to six sections when I'm done so I can repeat um, the pattern a couple times on whatever I'm painting with this kind of style of design. So just start breaking it into large sections. The larger the section, the more of um, your design you can kind of create but you can go in any way, shape, or form. My white was a little bit wet here, so I'm just gonna be careful, again, using a very light pressure. Just to, you wanna lay it on top. You don't wanna scrape the paint that is below. So we're just gonna work our pattern and design. So let's hear one, two, three, four, five. So let's do this one about here to create six distinct little sections of fabric. Now, if you're not sure, or you're unsure about what you wanna use for your patterns, I like to stick with really basic designs on these, because I think it pulls off the look really well without complicating it too much. So the first one that I'm gonna do is super simple. I'm going to do polka dots. I'm gonna do big green polka dots, and then I'm gonna go in and add some smaller green polka dots. So all of the colors are gonna be the same, um, but different patterns. So we'll start by adding in some green polka dots here. Make sure you have some of them going in to your edge, like you cut your fabric. All the way around. And you pick at least one other section to do it. I don't like the sections next to each other to be the same. So these two will be my other two designs. So I could go polka dots here, here or here. So I'm actually gonna do the three, I don't want the corners to be the same. So let's see here. So I'll do this one polka dots and then I can do these two the same and these two the same. 
So again, do a few so you can see the pattern out in the open and then do some that go cutting across the edge. Where the fabric was cut. And then I'm gonna come back through with smaller green polka dots. Now these ones, I'm just gonna use the tip like that. Just place a few around in the design. You see that? Just like that. All right, the next shape I'm gonna do, I wanna do stripes. So on this one, I'm gonna do thicker green, light green stripes, and then we'll come in with a thin, dark green stripe. So I'm just gonna lay them on here, all the way across lines, and then we'll fill every other one in. So, again, you're laying that paint on top. I like having the white base coat on this just because it really does help the lighter colors show up a little better with just one coat. And also that way, if in your design you want to have some white showing through, it leaves the rock a little brighter. Or you could just do this on a white rock. Now I'm gonna do the same pattern, but I'm gonna turn it uh, just to make it more visually pleasing for myself. Now I'm gonna let that dry because I wanna add the dark green stripe, a skinny one, right down the center of each of these um, thick lines. And then the third section, I think we'll do kind of a, a checkerboard pattern. Maybe we will do it with both colors so it will fill the entire space. Base. So I'm going to start by just adding in my green squares. I'm going to use one of my straight lines to help me create those first few squares to create the checker so that it's a full square. So I've got all four lines. When you have one square, you can work off of that one square to create a checker pattern, even though not all of your edges will be straight, obviously. And go ahead and just have that pattern go right off the edges of your fabric. And the good thing about the white base coat is if you do need to go back in and kind of touch up, if you make any mistakes, you can do that as well. So I'm going to use this side edge here to create my first square. Up here, try to start with about the same size square. And then work your way all the way into the tip with that pattern. And then back down again. And we will let this dry just a smidge as well before we add in the green into that. If we do, I kind of like it just green and white like that. We'll see. So I'll, these should be dry enough to come back and add. I'm just going to do a single stripe with the green down the center. And you could do these like green and gold, green and red. I mean, really, once you see this broken down, you can just run with this idea and take it so many different directions. I kind of like the white in there. I can't decide. And we've got plenty of white in it. So I'm gonna go in and I'll speed this up a little bit. I'm just gonna fill in the white squares with my light green here in this check and pattern. It will also help me get in there and kind of clean up any edges to make it really a nice checker.
Uh, down here on the trunk, I'm just gonna do a little like hash. It almost looks like a confetti style fabric. Make sure it's going over the edges as well. But that's all we're gonna do on that piece down there. Now it's okay when you're filling these in if you go over that black edge just a little bit because we are gonna reline now this entire thing and then we're gonna add these little hash marks that create kind of like the little stitches. And you can do that a few ways. You can create little X's on some of the seams. You can do two lines right next to each other like that along the seam or even just one here and there along the seams. And I just realized you couldn't see any of that. There you go. So you can X hashes or even just single ones all along the seam lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the main lines that already exist on here first and then we'll start adding the hashes on there. But I will have the tunes going and we'll do it a little bit faster since some of it's a little repetitious. So once you've got your lining done, now we're gonna go in and add some of our little marks here. And if you see, I'm kind of doodling off to the side every once in a while, because I don't want, if I get any of that green on here, I don't want any of that to transfer. I want my dark lines to be nice and dark on here. You can do a couple little hashes off to the side even, cause that could just add a little cuteness to it. And then once you're all patched together, you will be done. How adorable is that? Super cute, really pretty easy. And once you've done one, you can really just run with this idea. Like I said, you can make the pattern red and green you could do you know all green you can use a white stone whatever you want to do there's just so many different ways you could do this rock but no matter how you do it they just look fun so i hope you enjoyed uh this rock painting tutorial we'll be back soon with something else to inspire you Bye bye